Welcome back to Differential Equations. In this video, I want to talk about dynamical systems. Let me get my head out of the way and let's jump right in to the vocabulary we need to talk about this. A first order differential equation we've talked about several times. It's any equation which we can write in the form x prime of t is some f of x and t. Technically speaking, I could make this more complicated. I could do things to x prime, but it's going to be convenient for us to assume that whatever form our differential equation is in, it can be rearranged to solve for x prime. A dynamical system is a system of interdependent first order ODEs. I'm going to do this in a dynamical system in two variables. In theory, I could extend this out to be a dynamical system in three or four or more variables. One thing that I want to stress in the systems we're dealing with, I'm going to write x prime as a function of x and y and t. I'm going to write y prime as a different function of x and y and t. Now, it's important to note here that there is no explicit dependence on y prime in the function that gives us x prime, and there's no explicit dependence on x prime in the function that gives us y prime. Technically speaking, we could have that, but it would just be a substitution away, right? If I had, for example, x prime equals x plus y and y prime equals two x prime, well, by substitution, I could rewrite that as y prime equals two times the quantity x plus y. So, x prime is there, but it very quickly goes away. It doesn't need to be there. And so we're just going to assume that it never is there. One of the things that can really make a dynamical system challenging is having the coefficient or having the dependence on t. And when you are looking at a time evolving dynamical system, things get really messy. That is well beyond the scope of this course. So we're going to stick with homogeneous dynamical systems where X prime is still a function of T but the dependence is in terms of x of t and y of t and not on t itself. And likewise, y prime is some other function g acting on x and y. And x and y can still be functions of t. x prime and y prime can still be functions of t. 
So f and g will change with respect to time, but the dependence is entirely distilled down to location. So if you think about a parametric path, x of t, y of t, will tell you a path that you trace in the x, y plane. Following along that path will change over time, but it is where you are standing, your x and y coordinates, that tell you what x prime and y prime are. That's enough information. And that's the sort of dynamical system that we want to focus on. It's incredibly common in the physical sciences to see a dynamical system like this. Uh, for example, uh, if you are looking at motion in a flowing river, well, depending on where you are in the river will tell you what the current is doing. And what the current is doing is what your velocity is going to be moving forward. X prime and Y prime are your velocity, X and Y are your position in the two uh, component directions. So if you are floating down a river and you have a map of what the velocity is in the river at any given spot, well, the current, the velocity of water is going to be what pushes you. So that's going to immediately become your velocity. You're going to move a little bit. You're going to be in a different part of the river that has a different current and things are going to, going to continue. So that's the idea I want you to have in mind as we start looking at these dynamical systems. For today, we are going to look at things actually quite a bit simpler than this still. If we have a linear homogeneous system, well, in general, a function which is linear with respect to x and y, it's going to give us that x prime is some ax plus by, and y prime is cx plus dy. Right. We aren't going to stick with linear systems indefinitely, but for today, we're mostly going to look at that. Right. Whether the system is linear or not, in any homogeneous system, solutions are going to take the form of parametric paths. Right, so some R of t, which has components of x of t and y of t. We talked about uh, parametric paths in multivariate calculus. If you need a refresher on that, uh, please get in touch. I have my videos from multivariate calculus on parametric paths. For some of you, it may have been a while since you talked about those. For some of you, it was relatively recently. The other thing that I care about is going to be an equilibrium point. Is a point x, y, where x prime equals zero and y prime equals zero. Why do I care about equilibrium points? Well, if you stop and think about what an equilibrium point is telling you, going to my analogy of the dynamical system is telling you what the current in the river looks like. What does it look like if there's a spot in the river that has no current? Well, there's some sort of eddy. If something gets to that spot, it's never going to leave. There's nothing pushing it away. Um, that might be a stable point where 
water is cycloning in, it might be an unstable point. There's a, uh, a geyser or a spring or something. And if you are centered perfectly, you're going to stay still. And if you fall off just a little bit, you're going to get pushed far away. What I want to look at today is the things that can happen at equilibrium points, how we can classify them, and how we can use that information to classify more complicated systems. Let me get my head out of the way and let me show you what I mean. In order to analyze a dynamical system, we can look at what's known as a phase portrait. At every point x, y, we can find the vector x prime, y prime, and graph it, and use that as a way of generating what the parametric paths that our solutions are going to look like. So let's start off with something that's kind of messy. X prime is going to be equal to Y minus one half X. And Y prime is going to be equal to sine of X. I just said that we were going to spend most of today looking at linear dynamical systems. This is very much not a linear dynamical system, but it is going to be something that is worth spending some time thinking about. All right. So I'm going to go to a piece of software and the link for this website is available in a couple of different places. It's in the description, it's in our D2L course shell. Um, and this is a tool for graphing a phase plane. We have X prime, we have Y prime. One of the things that I want to point out on this plotter is well, fractions work kind of ugly, so we're going to put 0 0.5. And assumed multiplication doesn't work. So notice that I've put the asterisk here between 0 0.5 and x. I need to explicitly tell the system I want 0 0.5 times x. <laughs> and then I can go ahead and click the graph phase plane button here. And if I scroll down on the screen, uh, the window is kind of messy, so I can't put the graph and the information on the screen at the same time and have it be readable. Uh, but let's see, is this the right button? Uh, that is the right button. All right, and I put that so there's just enough space. You can see the um, system as I wrote it out. You can see the graph here, and you can see that there's a bunch of arrows on the graph. So again, the idea here, uh, the thing that I'm looking at with this is I pick a value for X and a value for Y. Uh, let's say for example, where am I? Come on. Sorry about that. There's too much going on and my computer doesn't like it. Anyway, let's pick a value like right here. If you look at the axes, this is x equals one and y equals one. And if you plug in x equals one in our system here, um, you have one minus one half, which is one half. You have sine of one, which is actually somewhere in the general vicinity of one half. And so when you look right here, the arrows are more or less pointing in a 45 degree angle where X prime and Y prime are equal. All right. Let me get myself back out of the way. And just like the direction field plotter that we saw previously, in the phase portrait plotter, if I click on a particular point, 
it will draw in the path for us. I'll click in a couple of other points so we can kind of get a feel for what this thing is doing. All right, I think that's probably good enough. All right. So whenever you are looking at a point that's somewhere in the general vicinity of here, the following the phase line is going to take you up and over, and then you're going to swirl into this whirlpool, right? So anything in this general vicinity gets drawn into this whirlpool. It's going to be called an attractor because it draws things in. If you are down below over here, you get pushed into this whirlpool. Right here, at the origin, we have kind of some interesting things happening. Things are drawn towards the origin, but instead of staying there, they all get thrown right back away. So things come in and then they get thrown away. That's going to be an unstable equilibrium point or a repeller. And so we have a couple of ideas here. These are the kinds of things we're looking at. And I want to try to find a general classification scheme for what's happening in the phase portrait. To find that, I'm going to go through a list of what are called the canonical equilibrium points. The first one you'll see called a nodal source or sometimes an unstable node. The classic example of this is the system X prime equals X and Y prime equals Y. I don't need myself in the way. All right, so if I plot that, you get all these arrows that are throwing directly away. And if I click in to draw a couple of phase lines, you can see that they all shoot radially away from what's happening. All right, so whenever you have a system that gives you a picture that looks like this, we can classify that equilibrium point as being a nodal source or an unstable node, whichever terminology you prefer. Next up on the list is going to be a nodal sink, sometimes referred to as a stable node. And the canonical system for a stable node is just the negative of the unstable. So we're going to have x prime equals the opposite of x, y prime equals the opposite of y. And if you put in some values there, right, plug in x equals one, y equals one, and you get that one, one points inward, negative one, negative one is your slope. Draw in all these vectors. Uh, again, if you click around, you draw all these uh, radial lines but the interesting thing this time is that all the arrows are pointing inward. So no matter where you are, the uh, nodal sink is going to draw you straight line into the system you're looking at. Right, keeping it going, the next thing up is going to be the saddle point. which we will sometimes refer to as a semi-stable node. And the canonical system for a saddle point has that X prime is equal to Y 
and that y prime is equal to x. And this gives us a really interesting looking uh, phase portrait. Uh, what I want to draw your attention to right away is what happens along the axis. The x-axis here, sure, x is equal to zero, but what, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, the x-axis here, sure, x is equal to zero. Why do I keep saying this? On the x-axis, y is equal to zero, x is equal to something else. Um, so your y value is equal to zero, and that gives you x prime. So there's no left-right movement, but the further over you get, the larger the y value is, the faster things are going upward. As you get closer towards the origin, things tend to settle down. And at the origin itself, there is no motion. And if I click in a couple of things here, we get a really interesting looking figure where things come closer and closer towards the origin. But the closer they get to the origin, the more that they are thrown away from the origin after they get there. Great. And if you follow the direction of the arrows here, what I want you to notice is that everything is drawn to be along one of two paths, right? When things are coming in, they're coming in from here from this line y equals negative x, and they're spreading out. When things are leaving, they're coming from anywhere, and they're getting drawn into this line y equals x. Where those lines are are going to change if we change the structure of the node a little bit, but that behavior is something to watch out for. That's always something that will make things interesting. Continuing onward, just a slight change from the last one gives us a center. Sometimes you'll see this called an orbit, where I'm going to have x prime is equal to y and y prime is equal to the opposite of x instead of just equal to x. And with that slight change, Instead of coming in and out, that is going to give us paths that are concentric circles. If I changed the values a little bit, if I played around with this, I could turn this from circles into ellipses, but the stability is the important thing. You do a loop and you end up right back where you were in the first place. And so whenever you have orbits like this, you are going to have a center. Moving onward, the next one up is the spiral source, sometimes called an unstable spiral. And the equation here looks very similar to the equation of the center. X prime equals Y, Y prime equals minus X. All I'm going to do is add X in up here. And that additional term takes all of my circles and makes them move offward left to right, turning us into these continual spirals, right? It's called an unstable uh, spiral or a spiral source, because if you trace the arrows, paths start nearer the origin and they move outward, keeps pushing things away. Right. 
Compare that to the spiral sink, sometimes called the stable spiral, where I take the equation of the center, x prime equals y, y prime equals minus x, and I put the extra term on y instead, minus x minus y. And the canonical version here is going to switch the orientation, uh, the direction of the spiral. But the important thing to notice here is that now the spirals, instead of going outward, are continually going inward. That extra term pushes everything down as it crosses the y-axis so that my circles collapse and everything spirals into the center, right? Uh, in terms of fluids, this is one of the most uh, reasonable models of uh, water flowing in a river. This is a whirlpool where everything gets pulled into one place and spins around and is um, very happy to be there and it's hard to get back out of. I've got one last system to look for. This is known as an improper node. And the canonical version that I'm looking at has that x prime is equal to x plus y, and y prime is equal to x plus 2y. If you're following along and graphing these on your own, Remember, it's been a while since I've said it, uh, but I have two y here and putting multiplication into the phase plotter software that I have, you have to explicitly write that out as two times y, not just two y. If you put in just two y, bad things are going to happen. Right. I like this one because it gives us kind of this sort of behavior where everything wants to follow along this line. Uh, the line happens to be y equals negative one half x, but that's not important. Everything follows along that line, but eventually falls away. Right? It's doing weird things. It's kind of like it folded the universe. Instead of having a single uh, sink or source, it's got this crease that things are coming out of. And that's weird and that's different. And that's why we call this thing the improper node. All right. So the reason that we care about these seven canonical forms is that if you try, it turns out that you can always establish that every equilibrium point in some way, shape, or form looks like one of these seven equilibrium points. Uh, if I had more time and I could give you a background in linear algebra, I could really build off of this. You can combine some of the tools that you learn about in linear algebra with the tools of looking at a phase portrait in order to do what's called linearizing and give a quantitative instead of just qualitative meaning to each of the canonical uh, equilibrium points, each of those phase portraits. That's beyond the scope of this course. We're just going to be looking at the pictures and trying to make sense of things. Since we're going to be looking at pictures, that's my assignment to you. I want you to look at a particular phase portrait and use computer software to graph the phase portrait and a couple of representative parametric paths for the solution. We're not going to analyze it further just yet. That's something we'll build up in the future video, but just look at the phase portrait itself.
All right, so I'd like you to look at this system. X prime of t is the cosine of y. Y prime of t is 2x minus y. Again, use the uh, phase portrait tool to graph this. Click around a couple of times to generate the solution curves, a couple of parametric solutions. Uh, you don't have to analyze it any further. I just want to make sure that you're comfortable using the tool. In the next video, I'm going to look at how to analyze these graphs, how to make sense of them, and we'll look at an example that is not quite just uh, thinking about water flowing down a river because most of these don't really make sense for that. All right, see what you can do with this one. I'll see you in the next video.